I am Becca, and I am at the Nightmares Film Festival in Columbus, Ohio, and I am here with filmmaker Dustin Mills, Hello. who is here to show the fabulous movie, Slaughterhouse Slumber Party. Thank you. So, if any of you follow my channel, which you probably don't, um, it is the Not Quite Final Girl. It, they... Well, this is pop horror, though. Oh, okay, I'm okay. a newbie. Like, oh, gotcha, I'm gotcha, brand gotcha. new here, Sorry, so they don't know me from Adam, but... Right. Um, or from Dustin Mills, right? right? But uh, I did review this film a few weeks ago, so I was able to watch it from like a backer DVD. Yeah. Uh, loved it. Thank you. And uh, so reviewed it, and especially given the fact that I'm a woman. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's probably, nice to have a female outside perspective. Yes, yeah. yes. It is yeah. premiering tomorrow yeah. at this film festival. Our world theatrical premiere right. at Nightmares Film Festival. Right. So this film centers around a group of women, yep. and they are women, which I appreciate. They're not like college girls. They're like women. No, they're, they're like, like ladies. Like, like yeah, they're they like have careers their, in their backstories. And right. Yeah. They they probably were friends or something in college. Yeah, sure. They're probably in their late twenties, early thirties. Uh, they all get together once a year for a slumber party. Yep. Um, where they like to they do like to get naked they and have do. pillow fights yeah. and all that stuff. But uh, one person brings a new girl who's a little sketchy. Yeah. Gretchen. Gretchen is sketch. Yes, exactly. Um, and so chaos ensues, yeah. obviously. Yeah. So I'm just going to throw it out there. Where did you get the idea to do this? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of weird because like, uh, this often happens with my stuff. It usually starts as something very small and then snowballs into like something completely different by the time mm -hmm. it's a screenplay. So we had, I had this idea, I was like, I'm just going to get a bunch of my actress friends together and we're going to shoot like a Jim Wynorski style, like oh, booby slasher movie. And then by the time we actually got to do it, I was like, instead let's do a trailer and try to make it into something bigger. So we did our fake trailer right. that had like, we attached that to our Kickstarter, raised the money and made it into this big, ridiculous like... It's essentially a special effects movie. Like there's a special effect yes. every five seconds. Yes. And it's it's much bigger than it started out as. So um, it just grew from the like influences of stuff I love, like Beetlejuice and Poltergeist and Ghostbusters and Tales from the Crypt and then those Jim Wynorski movies like I just mentioned, like Sorority House Massacre and Hard to Die and all that stuff. So Within this movie, and it starts with this a, tra a fake trailer for a film series. Right. It's Rocket Bomb Ripcage. So one of the girls is really into this very cheesy, uh, over the top B movie series, yeah. and she uh, brings the movies every time they're there. Yeah. And the girls are all like, oh yeah, we'll watch these. But, <laughs> so do you feel like? wrote her as sort of the fan character yeah she's the she's the fan proxy in the movie she's a youtube reviewer i know a lot of youtube reviewers one of my best friends is a youtube reviewer i know this youtube reviewer <laughs> so uh i i kind of took things that they say and the way they feel about low budget stuff and the alienation that kind of comes from being a horror fan sometimes right. and built them into that character so yeah. that horror fans because i think there are other proxies in the movie that people can attach to um, but horror fans specifically have um, uh, Lennon, played by Aaron R. Ryan, right. that they can kind of attach to, and that's their entry point into the movie. Right, and so yeah, if this is a movie that you like, you will identify with her character, for sure, which yeah. I did, and I felt bad for most of the time. <laughs> but we also have, uh, within the group, we have uh, Haley Madison, yeah. who, as you guys know, is uh, in Paris Hell, yeah. which is uh, one of my favorite movies. Among other things, she's in a million things. She's in a things, lot yeah. of stuff. She just has the greatest comedic timing. She's very good. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she's just she's hilarious. She's natural. She's she's just like the chick you would hang out with. Right. Yeah. She's the right. character that like I, I even though she's kind of gross and weird, I, I wanted I wanted people to have a crush on her by the end of the movie. Like that's what but I again, wanted. But again, gross and weird and juvenile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like again. Uh, and she's like. You know, for Haley, Haley's one of my very good friends. Uh, she's basically my little sister. And I just kind of took her personality and turned it up to 11 and then inserted a little bit of my personality. And that's where that Courtney character comes from. And right. she's ridiculous. And I think she's the one that people remember, like, they really remember her. Right, because her. she's the one who walks into the naked pillow fight and says, What? Yes. 
nobody told me we were getting naked. Right, yeah. And she, she does the cool she's trick. Where like, she's, she's the girl who's like, let's do shots. Right, like, exactly. Uh, you know, yeah. shit's going down, but yeah. we're going to do shots. And she can pull off her clothes without ripping them somehow. Like, she just goes, and they come That's off. That's a talent. Yeah. Just, yeah. Gretchen is played by Jay Lupa, and she's the villain of the movie. Um, and she's very Freddy Kruegery and very... Uh, uh, she, she, beetle she juicy and kind of Reagan, sure. Of the Exorcist, she, yeah. she has, and she's got that deadpan yeah. thing just down. I, and like her, projectile body fluids. Oh well, yeah, I mean, she's got a little bit of everything. Yeah, but like her sense of humor, even when she's like normal Gretchen, like mm. human Gretchen, she has this like great, uh, just she plays it so straight. Yes, um, and she's smuggling bones <laughs> in the party. Yeah. <laughs> In I a body cavity. Yeah, I won't give that one away, but yeah. it's great. But then they're all like, I mean, she's a little weird, but, <laughs> you know, they all yeah, do give her a scan. She's a walking red flag, <laughs> and only only Courtney picks up how strange she's being, and then turns out she's right. Like, when, yes. when someone tells you who, you who they are, you should believe them. So if they're right. a walking red flag, maybe, maybe, you know, believe it. There is an incident in the pillow fight, yeah. and Gretchen ends up dead. But you know, Gretchen was there for other things anyway. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. So Gretchen comes back and they have to battle. And she's like a shape-shifting ghost witch thing. She has power, she can turn into monsters, she can like create yeah. monsters. So she's just an excuse to have crazy special effects and really cool moments throughout the movie. Yes, and I will say I love, I, I love Alice Winkler anyway, but yeah. I loved her character. Yeah, Stoya, <laughs> yes, Stoya. Yes. The Russian uh, art yes. teacher. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, and, and that is part of it. Every one of the girls was, they're all a trope. They're serious, right? Yeah. Because you've got, okay, so Ronnie Jonah was the cop in training. So right. you got to have somebody who has a gun. Right. And then you've got the girl who was the pro wrestler. Yeah. And you've got, uh, you know, you've got the weird girl. Then you've got the, the girl who runs the uh, bookshop. Yep. You know, so you got kind of like geeky, kind of bookish one. Yep. Uh, you got the party girl, right? So you kind of created your own little set of tropes for this. Yeah. So how did you come up with those? Um, they're kind of like, some of them it's just based on, see I know all these gals, except for Alice. I didn't know Alice before we made the movie. Um, I know all these gals and I kind of tried to play to their strengths as actresses because I've worked with most of them before. And so, like, parts are written for most of them. Okay. Um, and it was just like, what? Can, how do I, you know, these are all funny women. How are they funny? How do I play to how funny they are? And also, how do I make each character distinct so right. that they're memorable and they're not just, you know, eye candy and they're not just, you know, that you don't, you don't forget them the moment they're off screen, you know? Right. They, they each have their own little moment um, that makes them memorable. Everyone was gung-ho. I think they believed in the movie. They believed in the script. They understood why the things that happened happened, and they were all into it. Right, because this is not, as I always say, this is not a movie for everyone. No. You have to have a certain sense of humor, and I appreciate that there is a whole female cast that appreciates that sense of humor. Yeah, because it's me too. obviously mine. I mean, like, <laughs> okay. yeah, when uh, I'm gonna say it wrong, Inflatio won Best Short or whatever, I yeah. was like, fart jokes. <laughs> yeah, like that's. That's my sense of humor, my sensibility, yeah. and I think that people are, they forget that that stuff is funny. Well, there, and there's this kind of, there's this kind of unspoken rule that like women aren't allowed to engage in that kind of humor. Right, we're know? not allowed to be gross or juvenile. Right. Which, or... and like, I find it super endearing when, when, a, when, you know, when women are just like, when they're just who they are, you know, and they're not right. repressing themselves because of an expectation. Right. And, what is the plan for this film as far as distribution and... So we don't have a distributor yet. Um, I'm Somebody needs to get on <laughs> I'm open to the idea of uh, VOD distribution and whatnot. Um, my hope right now is we're going to do another like phase two Kickstarter, and that's to take the movie on tour next year, get it to as many fests and conventions and stuff as we possibly can, get it in front of people's eyeballs so they remember it, so that when we go to make Slaughterhouse Slumber Party 2, we have this built-in fan base who are super into it. So that's the hope. I, I was asked a couple weekends ago if I was in it. I said my boobs weren't cool enough, but I'll be in. Your boobs are cool enough. I'm like what? I'll be in Slaughterhouse Slumber Party too. Do it! I dares you. Oh I no! I, you. I totally will. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> our producer and our marketing guy is 
submitting to a lot of fests. I don't know uh, what all we've got into. This is our first one. This is our first yeah. film Which fest. is a great one to get into. Yeah, yeah. It's, very, yeah. it's been very cool so far. Um, and so I'm sure it'll be popping up in places. Yeah. So when you see it, if you have those sensibilities, yeah. the come to butthead sensibility, <laughs> like I like to say. Or if you just like boobs and monsters, which you should. Right. Then like give it a shot. Yeah. There, there's something for everybody in this film. Yeah, I agree. Yes, I agree. Yeah. So we are going to go watch a movie. Yeah. Thank you for talking to me, sir. Thank you for talking to me. All right. And uh, you heard it here. I'm going to be in the sequel. Yeah, I will. You're, uh, you're going to regret it if you didn't mean it. I'll be dead, busty, bloody girl on the floor. Okay. That's cool. what I tell everybody. I'm like, I'll sure. be your dead, busty corpse. Sure. Yeah, we can do that. Sounds good. Okay, guys. Thanks. We got time. Um, actually, I just want to... There's some cast and crew here, and I just want to say thank you to them because they're all amazing. Um, if you see them and recognize them, please give them a pat on the back because they're awesome. Uh, Dustin, what was your, uh, where did you shoot at? What was your uh, shoot like at the time? Sure. Um, so we shot in Toledo. That's where I'm from. In Toledo, we have this sort of, um, I think there's something similar in Columbus. We have this area where there's all these Victorian houses called the Old West End. And um, we rented a house and kind of let the lady know, like, hey, we're making a weird movie here, and she was totally into it. And we, uh, and we shot it there. Um, production was a total of six days. So we spent one day on green screen doing the fake trailer stuff, and then five days on location in the house, and it also served as a place for the cast to stay. So they were all kind of cooped up for a week with each other and luckily bonded and don't hate each other, and I think they're all friends now. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I just, first off, like, six days, that's fucking amazing. Like, you don't know, oh, thank you. fantastic, and I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Um, how much rehearsal time did you have with your actors prior? Because their performance was so spot on. To uh, prior to shooting, none. Uh, but, but I'm like, I'm my style of directing is very much like rehearse 20 times, shoot it once or twice. Um, we don't shoot on film, obviously. We actually shot that on two smartphones, but um, we. But I shoot like I'm shooting film. Um, we, so we we get it down. We get the timing down. They get their delivery. And nine times out of ten, maybe it's because they all know me and they know how I write. They seem to already know what I want. So I do very little adjusting. They're just so fucking good that that they kind of nail it most of the time. So. And then the fellow in the back. Yeah, uh, the Rocky Bond Ricky stuff was a lot of fun. Do you think that's something? <laughs> How many times have we been asked that? <laughs> so the, the people who back the movie are all like, make a rocket movie! And the, the fucked up thing about it is, is that the longest part of post-production was that trailer. It's the shortest part of the movie. Uh, you know, our post-production was nine months uh, doing all the effects and uh, color grading and all the CGI and modeling and, um, you know, and then compositing practical stuff in. And the rocket stuff just, even though it's like intentionally cheesy CGI, it kind of pushed my PC to the absolute limit of, like the, the shot of the Ku Klux Kaiju stomping down the city street <laughs> took hours and hours and hours to render and crashed several times. So maybe, it, you know, I, I, since people are asking for it, I'd never say never, but I would need like a team and a much more powerful set of computers to do it. So there, um, we had just like a, like a small army of LED lights and we gel them, and there's actually, um, so there's kind of a practical reason for why, so the movie starts pretty flat lit, and some of the flat, like, bright, saturated lighting is actually two work lights turned vertically, so that we would get, like, this really direct but soft light, and then once the movie turns into a horror movie, we get that stylish blue and green stuff like you're talking about, and part of the reason we did that is because we were working with, we were shooting on smartphones, um, we use specialized lenses for some scenes, but usually we were using the stock lens. And your smartphone wants everything in the film to be in focus, which means you have no depth. So we tried to create depth by changing up the lighting between the foreground and the background, making sure everyone had an edge light in most scenes, and separating blue from green gave us the depth that the camera lens couldn't. How'd you do the boob tentacles? <laughs> okay, so... Um, this motherfucker with the pink mohawk, who also won uh, part, like he and his wife won Best Director. Woo! Uh, he, uh, he, we split the duties of visual and practical effects. I did all the visuals, visual effects, and he did all the practicals. 
Um, except for the little Gretsch baby. I made the Gretsch baby. I'll take credit for that. <laughs> uh, he made that amazing torso. He cast it from our actress and ran it in silicone. And I literally, in post, bored a hole through the back and made little tentacles and pushed them through. And we did it about 400 times, my assistant director and I, until it looked right. And we lubed them up with KY so they're a little wet when they come through. And um, we get a lot of compliments on that. A lot of people say it, it makes their nipples hurt when they see that scene. So uh, yeah, that's how we did it. Just a big old, really well-made silicone piece. Uh, were there any uh, effects that you wanted to wanted to do that you couldn't do just from a time or you know just money or whatever or did you see did everything happen the way you wanted it to? It pretty much all happened the way I wanted to. There were a few things that like I imagined differently like I think at the end when Gretchen comes in and she's all wrinkly and wet and stuff I mean, my original vision was that it was going to be like a full monster suit, but that's nonsense when you're making a movie that cheap, you know. So, so Marcus did something that's just as fucking cool, and um, I think essentially we, you covered her in latex, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Let it wrinkle that's up, tough. yeah. So that waterlogged look is just totally low tech. Um, and, but we did have so I have this philosophy on basically all my movies, and it, it was definitely a play here. We try to do it practically. If we can't do it practically. I'll do it digitally because digitally takes me a lot of time, but it's free because I'm doing the, the VFX. Guys, give Dustin and the folks here in the